Welcome back to the At The End Main Outdoor Journal. Oh no, we don't have any soap. What are we going to do? Let's make some Mary Day soap. Let's show you how. Today we're going to make even further use out of that nice bear that we trapped last fall. We, uh, we saw our video, we rendered down a bunch of bear fat off him. Now we're going to turn some of that bear fat into some nice soap. Uh, we got all our products gathered up here. We got some nice quality high test lye. You want to be real careful with this stuff. It'll burn you bad, get it in your eyes. You want to be real careful. Probably should wear gla goggles or gloves with that. We got uh, two jars of uh, bear grease that I put in the uh, warming oven of a wood cook stove because we got it going. There's a big blizzard today. Bring that uh, so it's a liquid form again. Some people put it in a crock pot. Some people warm it up in a pot. But you want to get it up a little bit above 100 degrees. That'll make it nice and liquid again. Like I said, we're using fresh cut wood fragrance. You can use any uh, kind of fragrance you want. Now, as far as the recipe goes, we're using an app called SoapCalc.net. You can just enter whatever kind of fat that you're using, the amount of fat, and, uh, and uh, just type that into the equation onto that website and it will uh, kick out all the different numbers for the water that you need, for the uh, lye, fragrance, and in this case, bear oil. So in our recipe today, we had 26.4 ounces of bear oil. We need 10.03 ounces of water. 3.48 ounces of lye and 0.83 ounce of uh, fragrance which we use fresh cut wood so we got all that stuff gathered up we picked ourselves up a nice uh, soap mold cheap off Amazon but you can just use a bread pan lined with wax paper or any any sort of mold or anything you can pour it out in so that it won't stick this is like a silicone lined wood box mold and it also come with a uh, some knives for cutting the soap and such. I'll show you those later on. We just got a simple simple scale here. We measured out all our ingredients. We got it all measured out. Of course here's our bear oil. And we got uh, picked up some cheap measuring cups. Got our fragrance and our lye all measured out. So we'll go ahead and get this mixed up. Any of these things that you use to make this soap you really shouldn't eat with again since the lye is kind of toxic until it cures. So uh, we just picked up also a real cheap uh, blender for 10, 10 or 12 dollars at Walmart that we'll just keep around just for soap and things of that nature to mix it up with. So uh, we'll uh, go ahead and mix things up and see how that goes. Alright, as I said before, any of these products you use, you don't want to use again for food. Just uh, have your designated products for making soap. So we're going to uh, use this cheap bowl here, start mixing up our product. So we got this uh, bear grease here, that uh, nice and golden clear, she's all liquefied again, well up over 100 degrees, we had that warming up in the oven, it's actually a little hot because it's uh, hot to the top, I think she'll work just fine. Pull that in. We'll go ahead and pour our... Uh, water in. Now it's important to note that all these measurements we have set are by weight not by fluid ounce. So this is uh, 10.03 ounces of water that's by weight not by volume. We'll pour that in. And this stuff you want to be real careful with. This is your lye. Don't get that in your eyes. I probably should have some PPE on. I'm give you a warning. You should wear PPE. I'm just going to be real careful and try to splat it everywhere on me except for in my eyes or on my skin. So we'll just uh, go ahead and add that in, and we're going to put our mixer on real slow. 
You want to beat this up to what they call trace, which looks about like uh, whipped cream. So we'll give that a try, see how it goes. couple ways so it starts to thicken before I add that fragrance. got to a trace. All the recipes said to use an immersion blender and I used a hand blender and I can see why. I've been blending this straight for over an hour but finally I had my doubts that it was ever gonna thicken but finally we are at a trace. Thank heavens. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it in our mold. Alright, take and get that in the mold. She's starting to thicken up. Boys, I'm so glad this started to thicken. I'd hate to waste two pints of bear grease on my own foolishness. I was worried I messed the recipe up somehow. I guess my uh, I was reading on my phone while I was mixing. It's, it takes a long time if you stir by hand or use a hand blender. They recommend the stick or immersion blender. That's what old Clay Newcomb used on bear grease. That's what I should have used too, but... I don't know, I can get the hand blender for 10 or 12 dollars, the immersion blender is 30 dollars. It's out here for four times as long. But that's looking pretty good, she came out pretty nice. So far, we ain't, it's still not hardened yet. There, I'm getting it everywhere. Smooth it all out, get a smooth on top. Alright, now we're just going to take this piece of wax paper, kind of lay it on top. We're going to wrap this in a towel, kind of slow down the curing process so it doesn't cure too quickly. We're going to put that wax paper over the top like that, wrap this in a towel. like that. I'm going to go ahead and let that set overnight, 24 hours before we cut it. Take a look at it tomorrow, see how it looks. Alright, it's been about 24 hours. It's time to unwrap that soap, make sure it firmed up nice, cut it up into the whatever block size that we want uh, before we let it uh, do its final hardening and cure. When I bought my uh, soap mold online, Come with a soap cutter too. You can uh, make make a. It's got a stop in there, so you can adjust all the uh, whatever width block of soap you want. And you got these different knives that you can cut the soap with. Uh, it was wicked cheaper. I wouldn't have bought it. I'd have just cut it with a knife. Came with the mold. So we're gonna try it out. See if we like it. All right. Let's unwrap this and uh, see what we got. Well, the wax paper's still there. That's a good sign. Oh, yeah, it's still a little soft, but I think it's firm enough that we can cut it. Can't make a fingerprint in it. You can still feel that it's uh, fairly soft. So we'll uh, go ahead and try to get that out of the mold and uh, cut it up, see what happens. So well, let's see how it goes. this one here to try to loosen the edges up a little bit from the mold. Looks like it's breaking free fairly good. Pull these out. Try to turn it upside down. See if it'll come out. Yep. Starting to come out. 
Oh, not too bad. None stuck in the mold, that's a good sign. A couple little air bubbles here and there. Alright, I set the uh, stop here on the cutting jig to roughly one inch thick cubes. Some people square off the uh, top side of this is a little wavy from where you smooth it off. Some people cut that square, but this is just for personal use. And I'm not really that fussy, so we're just going to set that down in the mold. Put it up against the stop. She's pretty soft, but I think it's going to be alright. We're going to use this uh, fancy crinkle cutter. Try that out. So we'll just try this. Put it down the slot. And cut. And all the way through. Try sliding the block back. Got ourselves a nice bar of soap. We'll finish working our way through the block. Shall we get a square? There we go. Once you cut that, it's not fully cured and there's still a little bit of lye in there. You want to be sure and wash your hands. You may even want to take the precaution of cutting it with gloves on. But uh, we got it all cut up. I'm going to wash my hands and then we'll uh, talk about what's next. Well, there you have it, folks. Just let this cure for two to three weeks and it will be ready to wash away. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.